campus of Bridgewater College. In 2005, myself and two teammates accidentally started a campus ministry, uh, really just out of a pure passion to seek after God and live a godly life. And, and from there, progressed to be a whole young adult campus ministry, fully equipped worship team, recording gospel hip hop albums, praise and worship albums, and traveling Virginia and Maryland to minister in different settings. And, and then the city started being changed as well, not just the campus. And I believe that in our do-rag years, we tabernacled with God. The tabernacle went with us, right? The presence of God went with us, right? But I believe that there's a permanency that God desires to communicate to a city, that we're not here just as a temporary thing. We're not just here as some place that's gonna pick up and go, right? That the tabernacle was good for a season, but then God said, now build me a house to dwell in. From the pulpit to the door, we really want an authentic experience with Jesus. Um, and we don't want to make that complicated. Even if you just come and visit and see what God's doing on Sunday morning, we know several people that just, I just want to come see what's happening. And you walk in and there's a sense of this is, something's happening here. When I think about what gets me excited about Duck, is that the Lord has allowed there to be a well experience here where people can come, can experience God, and the ripple effect that happens in a city when people have had an encounter is what I get excited about. Sunday morning, in every meeting, when people come through the doors, we want it to be a good, overwhelming experience. Mm -hmm. When we think about it, overwhelming, overwhelming joy, overwhelming peace, overwhelming love, so when you leave, you cannot leave the same. We want it to be a contagious environment. And so every Sunday we say, welcome home family. Um, there is definitely a family aspect that you are adopted here. Um, one of our house habits is we choose you. And that's, that's the es essence of adoption is choosing. <laughs> that um, I'm full without you, but I'm more complete with you. Um, the mission of Duck um, is to revive, develop, and send. And so um, what we want to do is to bring people to life, to develop them in their giftings, um, in the identity of Christ, and then send them out to, to build a community, build a nation, um, build a world. And I think about our church not only as a launch pad to send places, but also like a water tower. We want to resource the city. We want to resource the county. We don't want to ask the city for things. We want we want the city to be able to ask us. So when I think about Project Home, I think about it's an opportunity for us to say we're gonna have a stable location where the city, where the lost, where they will be able to find us. We'll be the lighthouse. One thing, no matter how bad the storm is in the sea, the lighthouse is gonna be in the same place. My heart passion as a lead pastor, as the founder, all those things, is I never plan to have all of what God is doing, but I did believe, according to Ezekiel 37, that we were placed in this valley because they were dry bones. And God asked the question, son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel responded, God only you know. And that's my response every time I step in here. God only you know. God only you know if these dead bones can live. God only you know the vastness of what you call this church to be. God only you know. And we live with that type of suspended holy animation. God only you know. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about Project Home and I think about our church, Project Home is big to many, but it's actually a small part of the plan that God has for this church. And when people see it at that level, at that point, they begin to say, oh man, well that's not that big, because what God wants to do is so much bigger. The building's a building, you know, and we have no doubt the building's gonna be purchased, but it's not, it's not the end goal, it's not the vision even. The vision are these people who, who are empty, who need Jesus, they need Christ, and they need a church home, a true church family and community where they can be nurtured in their faith, they can grow. We can individually do something, but when collectively as we come together as a church and as a body of Christ, man, when you think about the disciples, individually they were able to do something, but collectively they changed the world. And I look at Project Home as kind of like one of the pillars, one of the stones that the people got from the bottom of the river when they were crossing into the promised land. And when Project Home is, is, is completed, I think everybody would be able to say, God did it.